Hello and welcome. Please pause the video, read the problem, and try it on your own. Then, when you're ready, press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, let's read the question. Rowan has $50 in a savings jar and is putting in $5 every week. So I'm going to pause and say, this is for Rowan. I'm going to write that down in an equation because that's usually where we're going with these type of problems. We're starting off with 50, okay? And then that's our intercept, that's our starting point. So our y-intercept, this is a linear function. You could tell because it's adding a constant amount each week. That's $5, so it's $5 for every week, I'll call it x. Right, this is our slope. And this total amount gives us how much Rowan has in his bank account. That'll be y is the total amount of money. And oops, W is the number of weeks. This is for Rowan. And there's another person, Jonah. They start with $10 and then $15 is added each week. So for Jonah, we're starting off with 10. Oops, 10. And so our y intercept is now 10. Plus $15, our slope, for every week. And that's the total amount of money for Jonah, right? Okay, so each of them plots its progress on a graph with time on the horizontal axis. So the x-axis here is time. That makes sense. Usually time is written on the x-axis. And then y is the amount in the jar, the total amount. I'll just put a dollar sign. Too lazy to write all those words. Which statement about the graphs are true? Um, okay, so we look at these two and let's just make an observation. We have two slopes and five is less than 15. So Jonah is adding more each week, the slope is steeper. Jonah is also starting with less, so the y-intercept is lower than Rowan's. Let's see if that helps us. Rowan's graph has a steeper slope than Jonah's. No, uh, Rowan's slope is less. Rowan's graph always lies above Jonah. Jonah's. No, it does at the start, right? It's like, uh, we'll show an exact picture in a moment, but let's say 50 is up here and, and 10 is down here. Rowan's is growing at a slower rate, something like this. You can imagine, though, that Jonah's, let me actually color code this for you. So let's say Rowan's going along like this, starting off at 50 here, and then going up at 5 per, per week x, right? But eventually, you can imagine that uh, Jonah's graph will surpass Rowan's because he's starting off at a lower amount. By saving more over time, eventually Jonah will surpass what Rowan has saved. This is not to scale it up, right? So that's not true, right? At the, there is a certain amount of time where Rowan's is, is lying above the graph, and we'll find exactly in a moment. Uh, Jonah's graph has a steeper slope, and that's true, because we're saving more each week. Jonah's graph always lies above Rowan's. No, that's not true, because sometimes he's below. Okay, so first of all, let's just find, just for fun, uh, when these two things are equal. This is something you're often being asked. In other words, at which point will they have the same amount of money? Let's talk about algebraically and graphically. First, algebraically. So at some point, Rowan's account, 50 plus 5x, right? Since, since we know that Rowan starts with more, but has a, a less of a slope, we know at some point that Jonas, because he's starting less, is gonna overtake Rowan. So at some point, they'll be equal. We're trying to find what that is, right? Where are they equal? Where is that point? So let's assume they're equal, and that'll help us actually solve where this point is. So we solve for x here, I'll subtract 5x from both sides and subtract 10 from both sides, right? So balance my equation, let's cancel out, and 10x is going to be equal to 40. And if we divide both sides by 10, x equals 4. This means after four weeks, they'll have the same amount of money, right? So if we plug in 4 for row, it's 50 plus 20, 4 is for x is 70. And then Jonah, 10 plus 60 is also 70. After that, Jonah will have more money than Rowan with this savings plan. So we can kind of get a sense that actually I kind of got lucky with my sketch up here. Uh, after one, two, three, and then four weeks here, they are at the same amount. Any, anything after that, Jonah's got more money in the bank. The graph and calculator, we can see this too. If we make sure, first of all, our stat plots are off. Mine look like they're off. I'll just make sure. Um, stat plots, stat plots are for entering data. We're entering equations. So I press the Y equals button. Enter Rowan's equation, 50 plus 5x. Enter Jonah's 10 plus 15x. And if we press graph, we can see these lines. Of course, you see parts of them, 
notice that we don't see everything because the standard window, the range goes on the y-axis, the range goes from negative 10 to positive 10, but we know that uh, our lower intercepts at 10 are upwards at 50. So I'm going to kind of mess with the window a little bit here. I say I want my x min to be negative 1. I'm going to go up to 5 because I know at 4 they cross. Do a scale of 1, that'll be my increment. Now my y min, let's make that negative 1. And let's go up to 50. And let's make that scale, let's go by 10s so we can see it. All right? Now here's our graph. Oops, sorry. I should take it into account if you go to window that they actually meet uh, when x is 4 and y is 70. So our, let's make our height um, let's make our height 100. So we can see this thing. And graph. And here we see our two lines, right? This is helpful because um, we can see where they meet. And that might help us make sense of tougher questions. So if it's second calc, I can go to choice 5 here, intersect. And it says first curve, curve or line. Second curve or line, okay. And then I want us to guess where they meet. Notice it says it meets at 470. And if you want to follow along the lines, you can hit trace and go left or right to see what's happening. So there's all the points here. Or you can go to second graph to see a table of all the x values and then your two functions, y1, which is row n's, and y2's. So that's 0, row n has 50, and Jonah has 10. You can see their different values. You can also change the increments by pressing plus and then say you want to go up by halves for some reason. Now we're giving a table where x is increasing by a half and it gives me Rowan's values here, y1, because that's what I entered Rowan's equation into. See a spot here, y1. So if we go to the second graph, it's because there's tables of Rowan's and Jonah's that we can really compare the details here. Alright, hope this helps.